I'm about to begin Book 3 of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. This book is traditionally understood to be concerned with yogic powers, supernormal powers, cities. In Sanskrit, the book is entitled Vibhuti. People look to this book with the expectation that they're going to learn something about supernormal powers. And you're not you're not going to learn about supernormal powers in book three. It's just something that's generally assumed and there is no basis for it whatsoever. But I don't like to disappoint people. So before I actually talk about book three, I'm going to talk about my own experience. My own experience of miracles which began with this very word, vibhuti. When I was in my early 20s, I was a spiritual seeker. I was looking, I was searching. I was searching for truth. And one day I just happened to find this book in my local second-hand bookshop in Scotland. I came across a book called Lord of the Air by Tal Brook. Tal Brook was a young American who'd spent six months in close proximity to Satcha Sai Baba in India. And he wrote in detail about Satcha Sai Baba's miraculous powers before he fled India in terror, believing Satcha Sai Baba to be a homosexual and the Antichrist. But I was intrigued by what he'd written about Sai Baba's powers. He wasn't interested in that kind of thing. Why hadn't I heard about this before? He was this guy wandering around India performing miracles. Apparently he's done everything that Jesus has done. Even bringing back somebody from the dead. It was quite incredible surely worth checking out. So off I went. I didn't even consider buying an aeroplane ticket because I didn't have much money. I just took buses and made my way from London overland to India. I didn't have much money at all. But I assumed that I'd be under some kind of divine protection. I was on a holy mission after all, to see the cosmic avatar. And so I wandered off through the Iranian revolution. I wandered through Afghanistan while the Soviets were taking over. And eventually I arrived in India. It was an incredible experience. And I made my way down to the south to Satcha Sai Baba's ashram just outside the city of Bangalore. I mentioned this word Vibhuti. The first time I'd heard this word it was in relation to Satcha Sai Baba who waves his hand and produces this stream of fine ash which apparently has all sorts of miraculous powers. So it was an incredible experience. Here I was with the cosmic avatar. Such as Sai Baba made a huge impression on me. I would dream about him. I had some incredible dreams. I had some incredible experiences. But even then there was something which didn't quite add up. It was hard to understand what I experienced at Sai Baba's ashram could in any way be regarded as spiritual just the opposite in fact. As Sai Baba's devotees, lovely as they are, when they're in the presence of such a Sai Baba seem to be reduced to simpering juveniles. 
It's the most wonderful romance that you can enter into. I have a story here from Satya Sai Baba's official biography by Mr. Kasturi. I'll read it out. It's a story which took place, I think, in the 50s or 60s. And Mr. Kasturi has written several volumes of Sai Baba's biography. He writes in a style which reminds me of the style of writing to be found in Marvel superhero comics in the 60s. It's a style which takes us in to this fabricated world. Sai Baba was in Kerala. I'll just read out Mr. Kasturi's words here. This, this, story, this happened at Kanyakumari. In the evening when the sky was transformed into a carnival of colours, pinks and purples, and the clouds bedecked themselves with golden fringes, Baba proceeded to the seashore with his party, gets a capital H, his party, and played in the waves of the three seas that mingle there. Each wave appeared to be more eager than the previous one to touch his lotus feet, feet gets a capital F, to offer him its own special homage. Suddenly, as if aware of the yearning of the seas, Baba stood facing the waters and said to those beside him, See, the ocean is welcoming me with a garland. At that very moment, a stately wave a few yards away, advancing majestically towards the shore, swept over Baba's feet and receded. Imagine the wonder and amazement of everyone when they found around his feet an exquisite pearl garland swaying and swinging with every surge of the waves. One hundred and eight translucent pearls each a priceless gem strung on a thread of gold. How charming Baba looked. Wonderful, wonderful. It's part of the daily reinforcing of the romance which we enter into. I'd like to read from another Sai Baba publication. This is Conversations with Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba. And this was from page 104 of the Second Impression, dated 1978. This is the copy that I've got. And here in this passage on page 104, Sai Baba makes certain predictions. It's always interesting when a holy person makes predictions. It's a sure sign that they've stepped out of themselves, especially when they give particular dates. Since Swami has taken body, he has imposed certain proper limitations on himself. Swami, our spiritual types like to refer to ourselves in the third person, has created idols of gold and could just as easily create a mountain of gold. But then the government would surround him and let nobody through. In Baba's life, up to 16 years, Leela's these are the ga these are games. Age sixteen to thirty five, miracles. And miracles here is in quote marks. Age thirty five to sixty, teaching and miracles. After age sixty, beyond the public. But even after age sixty, his close devotees may see him. He will tell the government they are his. This body will live to age ninety six and will remain young. Well, I've been to India a couple of times since. And the last time was about 10 years or so ago. I was no longer a spiritual seeker. But I happened to be in Bangalore and I thought I'll just take a day trip out to Sai Baba's ashram. It's not so far. And there used to be a, a tree in the courtyard with a seat underneath it. And the devotees could sit round about. But this had been replaced by a huge concrete and plastic pavilion. And you had to go through several security checks before you'd be allowed in. This included going through a metal detector, airport style metal detector. 
and having your bag searched, you weren't even allowed to take in a pencil. You kind of wonder what the cosmic avatar is afraid of. And I was sitting next to this young man and I recognised him, or I recognised the condition he was in. It was a similar condition to the one I'd been in when I first went in the presence of the cosmic avatar. And then out it came, out came Sai Baba, tottering along, looking a little unsteady in his feet. He certainly had aged, so he was still doing his thing, still appearing to the public. I think he was probably in his 80s at about this time. And later on I checked the bookshop, and there was the book, Conversations with Satya Sai Baba, and I looked for this passage with the miracles in it. I couldn't find it. This particular conversation with Satya Sai Baba had been rewritten. So Sai Baba was still appearing in public. I don't know to what extent the government of India was his, but he certainly had aged, even though he still has his afro hair, which somebody once mentioned to me was actually a wig, but who knows. I was no longer on a spiritual quest in India. I went to Goa. I enjoyed the delights of the Goan beaches. And one day, I was walking along the beach in my bare feet with a smile on my face because it really is a paradise there. I was enjoying the sunset and the beauty of the surroundings and the sea came up and washed over my feet. I looked down and I watched the surf washing over my feet and receding and it left a trail of foam. And I thought to myself, oh, it, it looks just like a string of pearls. And that's when I remembered this passage in Mr. Kasturi's book. <laughs> the sea didn't leave me a string of pearls. But that was the image that immediately came to mind. I wasn't thinking of Mr. Kasturi's book. I hadn't read it for over 20 years. But then the story came to mind. And I thought, is this how the story started? What seems like a string of pearls becomes a string of pearls. It's too good a story. Of course it's a string of pearls. Let's go with it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful story. It's wonderful. It's captivating. Of course it left a, it left a string of pearls. That string of pearls must have a golden thread through them. So for the record, I believe in miracles, I believe in supernormal powers, I believe it should be possible to fly through the air, I should believe it should be possible to live without food and water, I believe it should be possible to enter into the psyche of another, enter into the body of another, and so on. But I have absolutely no basis for these beliefs. They are just based on wishful thinking. If they're true, that's wonderful. But there is absolutely no basis for believing in them other than wishful thinking. I'm happy to be proved wrong and to be shown, yes, these, are, these miracles are true. But you're never going to get a demonstration. There's always some get out clause. So this is just by way of a preamble to book three of the Yoga Sutras. Stories of supernormal powers are no more than stories. They have absolutely nothing to do with spiritual understanding and spiritual realization. And I'll be looking at these sutras, which are usually understood as being to do with supernormal powers in some detail later on. But again, talking from my own experience, there is one city which is the only one worth acquiring. And that's the city of knowing what texts like Patanjali's Yoga Sutras are about. They reveal the miracle of consciousness. And that's the miracle which I invite you to enter into.